Welcome back to our ICF Mountain Home Build. I have my staining clothes on today and we're going to be sanding and staining these beautiful double doors. We're also going to be installing gas lines for our future fireplace and also for our range. And also I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the one skill that I really wish that we had in this economy and see if you agree. So, a little bit more on that air conditioner. It's a little 8,000 BTU window unit and it has cooled the entire house. I was really impressed. So I came up here and installed it at night, let it run all night. It dropped the temps down to in the mid 70s. Uh, the dehumidifier really helped as well. I dumped it about four times, took a lot of water out of here. And, uh, but it has stayed nice and cool just with that little 8,000 BTU window unit, which is a testament to ICF and spray foam. It's freaking awesome. We could probably cool our whole house with just that window unit. So I'm thinking, since we do have central AC upstairs and downstairs, in the summer we can probably run that upstairs one to cool the entire house. And in the winter we could run the downstairs one to heat the house should be really efficient. And if I can figure out how to get it to run on solar, man, we're winning the game. Got my pencil this time. Pro tip. It does have a pro tip, I just sharpened it. What's the difference between a tip and a pro tip? I don't know, pro tip sounds better. I stole it from Eric Perkins. The one skill that I wish I had, automotive skills, automotive <laughs> repair. If I had the opportunity to go back to school or to, if I had the time to dedicate to learning a new skill right now, it would be an automotive repair. Let me tell you why. I've got kids that are of driving age right now, um, and with us living as remotely as we are, have, the school bus stop is 15 minutes away, the school itself is 45 minutes away, and when having high schoolers, they want to drive themselves, they don't want to ride the bus, it's not really cool. But also, <laughs> being a teenager, um, the kids that are, uh, my one, my oldest, is now taking college courses and also has a part-time, well, this summer it's full-time, 40 hours a week, uh, full-time job going into town, and again, that's 45 minutes. That means that my vehicle is gone like six days of the week, and it's not even school yet, and then we're both going to be in school, or Marina and I are both going to be in school school for college uh, starting in the fall. So that's going to be crazy trying to figure out, you know, uh, part-time jobs and school and all the activities and errands that we need to run with, with just sharing a vehicle. So I've been in the market for a used vehicle and oh my God, they are through the roof right now. Can't Prices. You, yeah. Well, the ones that are listed, I'm on Craigslist and I'm looking for to buy from an owner. And the prices are absolutely insane. Vehicles that are like 20 years old that have over 200,000 miles on them are going for $7,500, $8,000. And you know, they were talking rusted out frames and major problems. It's absolutely crazy. People are dragging vehicles out of ditches, repairing them, flipping them, and they're selling <laughs> out of the for, like, for like 400 times the price. Like it's absolutely insane. You look up the Kelly Blue Book value and they have them listed for double, triple the value. It's insane. Um, Supply and demand. Yeah, we saw a vehicle. We looked at another a vehicle the other day. It was a salvage vehicle, 1995, and it was manual. It had 217,000 miles on it, and they had it listed for $4,800. That's just insane. Um, well, it, it was over the what it was actually worth. Is right. maybe it was worth $4,800 if it was a particular type of vehicle, but they're listing at well above market value. And uh, they're actually, you know, they're getting that price. They're so. getting that price. Up here, uh, now, now we have the opportunity, so when you live remotely, and the reason I'm passing this along, is if you live remotely like we do, you know, we can get a new vehicle for sure um, if you want to, you know, go into the debt for a new vehicle. But the problem is, is these roads up here are so bad that your vehicle is going to just get beat to snot uh, <laughs> driving on these remote roads. It's much more practical to buy a used vehicle and to know how to repair it. Right. Or what a lot of people do around here is they buy salvage vehicles and then they repair those. But you have to have the skills to first know what vehicle you're buying and know if it's a good buy and then to know how to repair it and if it's, you know, worth and parts that are worth repairing. And so that's where those. Uh, 
uh, automotive skills come in. And you know, Jeremy does have a little bit of skills. Uh, we just really don't have the place to repair a lot of things. And he doesn't have, he doesn't know about all the different types of vehicles. So he, you yeah. know, there's still that limited knowledge. But if you're going to try and do a, a salvage vehicle, a lot of times, I mean, you may have to replace a lot of parts. Uh, and I don't have a shop to work in. And there's a lot of specialty tools that I don't have because I, I'm not in that business. And but ha having the knowledge uh, is really helpful if you're in the market and trying to shop through all of these <laughs> things. I mean, they're pulling things out of fields they and are. being like, "Here, four thousand dollars for this forty-year-old truck that has no motor and <laughs> holes in the bed or whatever." But you know, it's part of that supply chain issue we've talked about in the last video. Um, the uh, new vehicles can't get chips, microchips. You know, Ford built tens of thousands of vehicles and just stuck them at Kentucky Motor Speedway. If you look at the aerial shot of Kentucky Motor Speedway, it is full of F-150s that they can't sell because they don't have chips. Chips are starting to come in. They're getting them to the dealers. The dealers are putting the chips in. They're, it's going to kind of level out here and, and ease up, but What's going to happen next year when there's 100,000 F-150s that are brand new, but they're two years old? Are people going to want to buy those or are they going to want to buy the newer ones? So there'll probably be a lot of good deals on those brand new trucks. But what if you need one right now? Well, even even so, uh, do you want to still spend the money for for a vehicle like that? Right. If, or again, for, yeah. if you live, re, you know, on, on roads like we do, or uh, the, you have, just having that automotive skill, I think, is is absolutely invaluable. If you are living, well, it's invaluable in general, but in particular, if you are living pretty remotely, if you're living on pretty rough roads where your vehicle is going to get banged up quite a bit. So I'd like to know what you guys think. Are you guys have you guys purchased a vehicle recently? Do you have those automotive skills? Do you um, wish that you had gone to school for that? Are you thinking about possibly signing up for some community college classes and learning how to do it. I mean, I honestly wish that I had the time to do that right now. You could make a really good business flipping vehicles or mm -hmm. even just maintaining your own saving money. So curious to know uh, what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Yeah, it's real similar to like doing this kind of stuff, knowing how to do building and it's DIY good. stuff. Um, anything you can do for yourself and be more self-sufficient, the more money you're going to save. And probably you're the, you're going to be happier with whatever the result is because it's done your way. But yeah, it would be nice to have a place to work on a vehicle. Um, we had to put ball joints and lower control arms on the truck the other day, and I had to take it to a shop because I could not get the ball joints out, and I don't have the tool. So. Just one of those things. One of those things we're passing along to you guys. So if you guys are thinking about doing all that, definitely look into the automotive skills. Yep. All right. Let's. Um, I got the gas line guy coming, so let's see how that's going to go. Um, I've been waiting on getting the gas line in. It's like the last inspection uh, trade that needs to be inspected, uh, other than the final inspection, and. Uh, since appliances are ordered and cabinets are ordered and all that stuff, you know, there's still a couple months out, but I wanted to have those gas lines installed and ready. So uh, inspected, everything's good. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're getting ready to put in some propane lines for the, that's the range. This is for the gas logs. I want one of these. It only took about 30 seconds. Last time we did this, it took a long time. Of course, we had to make a bigger hole.
so we got our corner fireplace all plumbed. Now we are not going to put in uh, our gas fireplace just yet. We're going to do just the bare minimum to get our certificate of occupancy, like I mentioned before. But eventually we're going to frame this all in. We're going to have a nice stone front mantelpiece, probably put um, a TV above it, um, and that'll be an, a backup source of heat. Now we did not go with a wood stove, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, uh, we just didn't want to put a wood stove in this kind of space. Two, because of a lot of the breathing issues involved with wood and wood smoke, uh, we've pretty much had enough of that. And uh, we figured that the propane would be a much better option for us going forward uh, with old age and not having to worry about cutting down trees and that kind of thing. But if we ever did want to add a wood burner in the future, we could put one in the basement or do something outside and, and plumb it into the house. Um, so that is another option for the future. But right now, we're just going to go with uh, what we think was going to work for this house for us for the immediate future and uh, go from there. Is there a nail over there in the side? Yep. Okay. Well, decided to go ahead and just finish sanding all of the doors so that we're done with the uh, dusty, dirty part. Get cleaned up so when we do stain them, you know, we don't have as much sawdust to deal with. It takes a long time. I mean, Pretty much spent this whole day, this whole afternoon doing those four doors over there. But it's all part of the process. So no staining today. We'll save that for the next video. But we did get our sanding done, or most of it. We got our gas in. We have the inspector coming tomorrow. And then we'll find out what we need to do, bare minimum, to get our, our certificate of occupancy. And that's what we're going to work on. And. Right. Uh, I have a feeling it's quite a f there's quite a few things left that we have to do. I mean, I know we have to do all our railings, and if we're doing the porch roofs, we got to do railing all around the deck, um, button up all of our electrical, and I don't know if we have to have the finished floor in or not. I hope not, because that's actually the very last thing we're going to put in. So Every county is going to be different. Every so county is different, yeah. So, so we'll, we'll find, find that out, out and we'll <laughs> let you know. And a huge thank you to Glenn for coming out here uh, from quite a distance and to putting in our gas lines. It was really hard to find a plumber that also dealt with gas. And that's what he specialized in, and he did a very nice job. Yep, we're really happy with that. So huge yep. thank you to Glenn. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you, man.